Since this problem is fairly difficult, while solving it, I referred to the contest analysis, which is available after every round, and describes how you can go about solving the problem. Every problem has a small and a large input, which are two text files that we can download and run through our program in order to generate an output file. Problems also have a problem description and a set of constraints. In this problem, there are two numbers, D and P. From the problem description, we can see that T represents the number of test cases, D represents the number of diners, and PI will be a list of numbers representing how many pancakes are on each plate. From the constraints down here, we can see that in the large data set, there will ever only be a maximum of 1,000 diners, and the height of the tallest stack of pancakes on any plate will be 1,000. Here's a small sample output, saying that if there were three test cases, it would expect this as output, given these inputs. Each test case we can read a number d that's representing the number of diners, and then it gives us an array, which is the number of pancakes on each plate. In test case number two, we can see that there's four diners, and so there's four plates. Two plates have two pancakes, and two plates have one pancake. In the last test case, there's only one diner, and there's four pancakes on the plate. We're then talked through how to solve all these sample test cases in order to better understand the problem. I'll now show the solution I came up with and how I can go about running that solution to generate an output file and then uploading that file to see if it's correct. I wrote my solution in the text editor called Atom in Python. I'll talk about the details of the program later, but for now, in a separate directory, I have my program and the large practice input file. I open a terminal in this working directory and then I can enter the following command. Python 3, and then the name of my program, instructs the computer to run my program with the Python 3 interpreter. I can then use this arrow to specify where my input file is. Since my input file is called blargepracticein, that's the name that I give it. I then use the other chevron operator to tell where I want my output to be saved. I'm going to call my output file outlargeb.txt, and then I run the program. Since the input is very large, it takes a few seconds to run, but eventually it generates an output file. And we can see this file was just refreshed. If it had been created from... If this file had not already existed, it would have been created as new when the program was run. With this output file generated now, which looks like this, I can upload it to the website in hopes that it's the correct answer. I click on Solve B Large, and I choose the file that was generated. During the actual competition, there is also an upload button for your source code. When I submit the file, it tells me that the answer was correct. Now I'll talk through my source, co my source code. Now I'll talk through my solution to this problem. The program starts up here by importing the math library. I only use this library for one function inside the program, but it has a lot of useful math functions nonetheless. Execution then continues down here at the bottom, where we first get the number of test cases from the input file as an integer. We then start a loop that you can see here, where we loop through all the test cases and, and call this function solution. Whatever solution returns should be the correct answer to the test case. When that correct answer is returned, it's saved as a string, and then we print out test case number i plus 1 and then the solution. Now let's look at how this solution function obtains the correct answer. Solution is defined up here. Solution is called for every test case. When it's called, it gets the number of diners as an integer and the number of plates as a list of integers. We then declare an empty list in which we will save all the times that we've observed so that we can then find the minimum time inside that list. We place a f an initial value inside the times list, which is the, high, the tallest stack of pancakes. We place this time there because if we decide not to cut any stacks, this will be the time that breakfast ends in. As suggested by the contest analysis, we then make an assumption that breakfast will end at every time from 1 to 1,000. And then we calculate the number of cuts that we'll have to make to each stack of pancakes in order to allow breakfast to end at that time. We calculate the number of cuts that are required for every stack here. And then the time that breakfast will end is the number of cuts that we made plus the end time, which is now the height of the tallest stack, since just previously we cut all the pancake stacks to this height. 
As I mentioned earlier, we save this time to the times array. Once we've calculated all the, all the times, we pull the lowest time from the array and return that as the answer to the solution, which is then sent here and printed out to the output file. In the contest analysis, it gives us this line of math, which given a height of a stack p, tells you how many cuts you will have to make in order to get the stack to be no more, no taller than this end time. This loop here looks at every stack of pancakes on every plate, and if that stack is greater than the end time, then we calculate the number of cuts that are required. We start with zero cuts, and every time we make some cuts, we increment this variable. So then later on, cuts will be equal to the total number of cuts we made on every, from every stack to get this end time. That concludes the summary of my solution code. To see other solution codes, we can go back to the archive problem and click up on the top right in contest scoreboard. This will give us the scoreboard that was archived after that round ended in 2015. In 2015, it took the first place contestant 14 minutes and 5 seconds to solve this problem. If we check this box solution download, we can download the source code that any contestant submitted for any problem. This is an excellent way to pick up tricks to help you code faster. I hope you enjoyed my walkthrough of this problem and will consider competing in CodeJam next year.